The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this Tuesday, the 11th of July. <clears throat> now we're well into July. And what we've got is a spike to the upside. You can see this is the 10 with the one minute chart on the left, made this dreaded H pattern, went to a peak D. That's what we always anticipate at least a D in a buy signal going to a buy mode. Then it turned down. But look at this long rectangle formation of that peak D on the left. Went sideways, 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 broke below, spiked above it, and then went plunging down from the 44.58.75 high. Uh, and right now we're at 44.44. Now, one of the things I'm looking at here, and it's a little frustrating for, for me and certainly for my subscribers, in that we had picked a perfect uh, level to short the, S, the um, semiconductor index via the three times uh, short SOXS had really nice, really good gains uh, in the uh, very short term, took a little bit of money off up to about 12 percent. Then we got stopped out, stopped out today for early morning. Uh, some actually, let me just check because I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, let me just have a look at the low there. Yeah, just by fractions. Uh, even if you waited until the open today, you got stopped out. And now it's running running quite nicely because the S&P, I think, is kind of vulnerable. S, the SMHs, the semiconductors, are kind of vulnerable here. We'll have to figure out how or when we get back in or if that's the place to get back in. But that was a clue for me that we were starting some kind of a rollover and it could be taking time because the nine period moving average, let me just go through this right now. So the Dow's up 79, it was up quite a lot more. It was at 34,140. And I said to subscribers, yesterday's strength was a little more than I anticipated. So we couldn't even get to the 34,100 to 34,200 area. So we went to 34,114. Now we're pulling back a little bit. But you can see that, look, this is the left side chart is the daily chart of the um, Dow. And here's that nine period moving average. Let me just highlight it there. See, it's still green. But at 34,015 on the green 90 MA and 39,998, now you're getting less and less room. The distance between that aperture, between the, the uh, green 9 EMA and the black 40 is getting narrower and narrower. The MACD is weak, stochastic is very weak. On balance volume is very weak. So you're just being held up by this one indicator, fantastic indicator. Uh, but we haven't done very much uh, since we took profits in our very um, kind of aggressive three times long, small position, but three times long. Uh, S8, what was it? This is on the, on the upside. So it's UDOW. We didn't go into the SDOW because I want you to see how it played out in the semiconductor uh, index first of all. So let me give you a clue as to what I'm looking at. There are patterns that I'm following always. So the one pattern that's really important is, well, first let me just show you. In in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always trying to identify the lowest low bar, count each higher peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it's at that fourth peak that other things can happen. We see if there's an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode, meaning you should get to at least the D. You can go higher, but you should get at least to a D. Well, on the left side, you see the Dow did get to a D uh, at 34,588. Then I see a bit of a warning here. We've got a Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle, or red Roman candle, right on that high of the 16th. The very next day, we had an inverted a red Roman candle, same implications that if it goes um, halfway into the wick, be careful to the downside. Well, that's exactly what we did. Then on the on the uh, bounce, and here's the other pattern that we look at. If I can just get to that, there it is, uh, right there. So I'm always looking at three major trends: straight line, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. In the, in the dreaded H, you come down sharply, you make an H pattern and fail at either the peak A or B, and you watch out because if you take out that left side low, you can go quite a bit lower. Well, look what happened. You went to uh, a trough at 33.610. 
You went to gray leg A, then peak A, then gray B, and now you're turning down. But we didn't get to the 33,610. So this balance says, now maybe we get to a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m pattern. To get a new um, breakout to the upside, you'd have to see 34,700. And I'd say that would be a really good action, but I don't see it just yet. All right, so within that context, You've got um, the weekly charts still holding very nicely. In the Dow, the S&P is the same thing. The S&P has made that peak D at 44,000, uh, 44, 58.28, just above the 44, 48, 47 level of about the 16th. So if, if you do the measurement, I said in this particular instance, yes, the MACD is weaker than on the right side than it was on the left side. The stochastic's much weaker, the on-balance volume's weaker, but that nine-period moving average over the 14 says it's going to have to be a process to come down, and even then you've got to put more weight into the holding pattern rather than to the breakdown pattern. And look, same thing in the QQQ, except he has the difference. See the narrowing, but the black line, the nine period, the 14 period moving average hasn't started to turn down yet. So that's still kind of po positive for now for the QQQ, but the MACD's weak, stochastic speak, on balance volume is weak. But look at the IWM. There's a nice M shaped pattern with a double extension right here. Uh, 189.24 was the high of the, around about the, what was that, the 14th or so? Yeah, the 14th of June. Uh, we pull back sharply, retested at 188.24, missed it by a dollar, making a test of that high, or a dollar and a penny. And now look at this. Today we went to 188.22. And if I count the peaks, um, this is going to start a leg C in the weekly chart. First time it's going to go to a C. It needs three cents higher than that high of today. So far, 189.25 will start a leg C. In the uh, in the weekly chart, that's good action, and the stochastic is good at 80 to 80 percent. So this is the moment where the small caps are telling us that they are a little bit more important at this particular time in this rotational correction, the high level con co um, correction. Let me just do the SMHs again. The SMHs are saying, look at that big red. Ah, oh, this is upsetting to me. Just just barely got stopped out. I would have kept it because we had really nice, very uh, small gains that we took. That would have given us a cushion. And usually I say, let's use that as a cushion. But the strength yesterday was a little bit more than I anticipated. And I said, well, you've got to give it a little le leeway. Well, that's okay. Money, making money is better than losing money. And at the same time, the nine-period moving average is still not cross negative. But I think it will. So the semiconductors are really the clue to me to what's going to happen. Now, let me just go back to this for the very short term, because I had said, um, it, just uh, shooting a message to the den to say that the 44, what did I say, 44? Uh, let me just go back and scroll up. Uh, there you are. So I had said, hmm, here comes the test of strength. Okay, there we go. It might be uh, five to ten minutes after the open that a bigger trend unfolds. No, what I said is 44.62 was resistance and 44.40 will be the downside support to hold. And here we are at 44.42. I'll be back this evening. I'll be right back. And look at that 200 feet moving average. We can put the screen in the 10 minute chart. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, folks, so let me just do this. One of, one of the things in the Chevrolet Method Drive is when you get to a D and then you pull back sharply, you start to close a couple of times underneath the 14 period moving average. Normally I would put a down arrow, but I found over the years over the thousands, thousands of charts that I've uh, um, notated in the Chad Wave methodology, in the actual notation itself, that when you get to that top and then it pulls back, but that nine period moving average is still green, there are times where the automatic presentation of putting a down arrow to say sell signal, maybe even a sell mode, because the nine period moving average when it crosses negative will take it to a sell mode. That can change, and I've seen so many times lately, uh, particularly lately, that when this arrow is up, you can go to a higher high and still that green line period moving average is there. Then you have to say, oh, wait a minute, maybe this is the one that gets the down arrow, and that's very often what happens because then you get the measurement, the vertical measurement, the price uh, test at this particular level, with that particular level, and it says, oh, all the, all the technicals are weakening, and this time we might turn down sharper. So in natural gas, this is the UNG, natural gas fund, we've got a peak D with a doji candle around about the 23rd or so of um, of June. I may as well give you the exact, uh, this is the continuous contract, 783 on the 26th of June. It gives you a one-to-one. -one. This is a beautiful A to B equals C to D. This is what... Uh, most of the TFN and hosts talk about. I'd use it in a particular way. I talk about it being a Chapman Wave one-to-one -one extend parallel extension, meaning that when you do this, let me show you the technique that I like to use. <clears throat> in this case, I'm just making it nice and thick so that you can see what I'm doing. Make it blue on the way down and then pink on the way for the extension. So new. This becomes pink. Let's see if it fits exactly. And that's the number of bars on the downside equal exactly the number of bars to the, to the, to the extension, but not from the bottom of the one-to-one. -one. It's the balance. So it's A to B equals C to D. It's got nothing to do with Chapman Wave methodology. And then, look, it missed it by, uh, let's call it 677, and the low actually was 670. How can that be 678? Oh, so I didn't do that correctly. Oh, there it is, 675. So it missed it by two or three cents. 
and now it's rallying back. So this is a beautiful channel wave parallel extension. In other words, the exact number of bars or the angle has to equal the same as on the left side. And now what you've got, MACD's weak, but try to turn it try to turn it try to turn up. The stochastic's very weak at 28%. On balance volume is very good. You see the gray line here on balance. This is the relative strength at about 52%, 53. That's quite good. And nine is above the 14. So the question was, I'm long a natural gas. I'd like to add to it. Now I don't know whether you are long the UNG or natural gas contract itself. So let's just do them both. In the natural gas contract, we did the one, didn't quite do the one to one. My eye says it was, it would just miss it by a fraction. But this is a great candle. <clears throat> I would enter right here. But this position, I'd have a different mentality altogether. This is the trading, trading position. So you get in at 272 if you're going to, and if you're going to, I don't know what month it'll be, but I'm using the continuous contract. I would actually have a stop. Now, you could have the stop if the nine period moving average crosses negative, but that means it would probably have to go down below today's low of 2.63. Uh, 2 probably have to go to about 260 or 258. I don't know if I would have that kind of a stop. So I would say get a position right now. This is a trading position. The other one can now become a core if it's lower down. And this trading position, the, the 14 period, 267. I, I'd have a fairly tight stop, 263. And if it manages in the next days today, in the next day or two, without t taking out the 263 entry point, um, and I'd have a stop at the entry point. Uh, sorry, at the 263 level, uh, if it holds that, and today or tomorrow it actually gets to. I got fib, fib figures here, but I don't want to use them right now because I got something even better. The high of the fifth was 2.793. If you can get to 2.793, all I would do is I would have a split position of the new trading position. I'd have the stop at where we spoke of 2.63, and I'd raise, I'd have a trading stop on half of that position. That's the new position. I hope that helps you. So, uh, and uh, the weekly charts are still terrible. So I'm just saying, daily charts have to leave the way to help the weekly charts, and we'll see what happens. And if it actually does get to this new leg, which I'd have to call E slash whatever it is. Um, that's where we'd have a test of strength, and we'll see whether the technicals are concurring. That's the way I would do it. Hope that helps you. Uh, blank, BL, BL, NK. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is excellent action. I like Blink uh, Charging Company. I had another one I mentioned this morning. I wonder what that one's, how that's doing for subscribers. Uh... Where did it go? Um, oh, I've got it right here. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so let me just get to my... Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is very good. It's above the 50-period moving average. The MACD is strong. The 9-period moving average crossed over yesterday. That's why I almost... Did. I wouldn't have got it because it closed yesterday at uh, 669. Uh, 668, 669 was the high. And I probably would have, so what was the low today? 664, I don't know, maybe I would have got it, but I would have had a very, I would have had an entry as a screamer, just either immediately or on a pullback. Uh, for instance, we had one that I wanted to add to our position, which is doing fantastically. I wanted to add to it to even get, to get a bigger position. It didn't pull back to the level I wanted, and now that one's up. It's also in the whole area of the either battery operation or charging or uh, AI. These are the groups that are working really well at this particular point. So I, I like it. I, all I can say is that the weekly chart, I mean, the daily is looking great. Weekly chart is horrible, and the, the monthly chart, there aren't even words to describe it. It, it is so bad. But that's not the point. You have to go from the daily to the weekly. If the daily starts to work, look how for the first time since it broke down back here, blink, a BL, uh, blink charging, BLNK is a symbol, up 13 cents at 681. When it broke down the week of the 3rd of February, look at that. It went uh, the week of the 10th of February. It was over the 14 period moving average for about four bars. It, tried to, it went over it only closed once or twice. I'm sorry, over it. And then, bam, it goes from 13.64 to 10.25. Don't tell me that 30% of somebody's like, about 30% decline is a horrible decline. Um, and then it keeps going down, and it's only touched the 14 period, sorry, 
the nine period moving average, which it turned negative, it was negative all the way from the, 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 the doji candle of September the 30th. I mean, what a nice uh, technique this is. Look at this, using the pink nine period moving average. And this is the first time you're getting a chance to see the pink moving average get close. I don't know if it's going to break above the black 14 period moving average. This is the first time it's even touched that 14 period moving average since uh, er earlier this year. So that's a starting point. So I, I like it very much. I think it's in play. And it's one of those where I, I don't know if you want to have a stop in your position. You, you like to get a poor position and hold it for a while. And in this position, in this case, I like it very much. It's in leg B. This, this one, if it can close above the, the highs of the 14th, 13th of June in the 7, 7, oh, if it can go to, into the 705s, that's going to be really good. And here it is at 680. I'll be back. That was a fun. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, I want to do this yesterday. I'm still getting used to my um, email, which is getting much better. I'm getting fewer, but I'm still getting a ton of junk mail, but much less than I did before. I guess it sorts itself out after a while. So I didn't see um, a goofy guy's question about bots yesterday. So bots is the, we are long gl uh, Global X Robotics and AI ETF. We're long uh, for quite some time now. 
uh, way back there in uh, April, May, I think it was right there in the 24s. It hit 30 the other day, or just about 30. Yeah, exactly 30 round number high. We actually took off a, ta a tad at that level, at the high, and we wanted to put back. And I would have put back today. I just, um, I'm a little un unsure of the reaction going into Thursday, Wednesday afternoon to Thursday, just based on the nine period moving averages, because this did go negative. So this is what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to say, I like it if you you haven't got a position, you want to know where you could get in. Yesterday, probably when, when you spoke to me, it was at about 28, uh, 35. It's only 50, 40 cents higher. I, I have a projection of this going to its all time high of 39.99, in other words, 40 uh, back in January of 22, and then going above that to the 55 area, just looking out longer term. But in the shorter term, it's in a choppy sideways move. But I think in your case, I would start my position now. This is not your big position. It's not even, it's more a starter position in the sense that if you were going to buy 100, let's just say, you can you could buy 30 right now as we stand at 28, not 82. But be prepared. It could come down a point, a point and a quarter, and still be very positive. The weekly chart, but the weekly chart starting to stall a little bit uh, technically in the uh, way the MACD's narrowing and the stochastics below 80%. But that nine period moving average so strong, it says to me, this is a place that's very important. And it will be even more important. And then the dreaded H, when it went below, but closed above, says that it shouldn't close above this high of the Thursday of July of 28.95. But if it does, all of a sudden you're looking at the, the dreaded H, the cup, the arch formation becoming a really powerful cup formation to the upside. So I'm going to say start your engines right here on bots. Get get a, get a position, and then we can work around it as you on, because we're gonna you're gonna be the same as us for anybody who didn't get into our initial position. It's almost the same sort of thing. I I should have done that yesterday. I was going to do that. It would have been a really nice thing. You can't do shoulda, woulda, coulda, because I think at some point we will test the 28 level. So we'll have another chance. So meantime, that's that's bots. Uh, another question came in. Could I look at? MBLY. So this is mobile eye. I believe, if I'm correct, I remember this being an Israeli, I think this was an Israeli company taken over by some, or there was, or I might be wrong. Let's see what it says. Um, mobile eye Global engages in the development and deployment of advanced driver assistance systems, ADAS, and autonomous driving. Yeah, I I'm, wasn't. Google, someone took over this company, if I remember correctly. Anyway, forget that. What we are looking at here is uh, it's MBL, M, MBLY is a symbol trading down 56 cents at 39.88. I like everything that I've ever read about it. Uh, this is really, it's, it's so important to the um, advancement of, okay, of self-driving cars. You're just going to see this become more and more important but even more more significant is that within the context of uh the the popularity of the stock that was a pretty uh sharp seller from 47 to the 35s and now it's trying to come back so there's something not 100 percent right about this it sounds like it's in the perfect area and yet mobile eye uh is mobile let me type that in mobile I, Y E, whoops, Y E, Y E Global. Um, something is not 100% correct because it hasn't been participating like the others in the AI area. So, this is a driver assist. It's really important. So, as a core position, I would, I, I know a person asking, it looks at the longer term. I would put this in your portfolio. Now, how you do it is up to you. But I would get, I put my foot in the door right here at 39.89. Now, for anyone else in a trading, uh, I would wait. I'd much rather see how does it hold the 38s. If it holds 38 support, that's good. Otherwise, it's going to test the 37 uh, level, which is a 200 period moving average again. So, the, and the, the weekly chart, have a look at this weekly chart. That is absolutely a sideways. That's very much 
a sideways action. So I don't think I'd be in a rush, but I would get my foot in the door right now. And then I'm, I'm able to make a, an assessment as it moves either in conjunction or in, in, with a disparity to the market itself. To, and, and I would also include how is it acting to the whole area of AI? Because this should be part of that sector. I'm not sure it is, but the way it's acting right now is not fantastic. It's had a nice rally. Uh, from 35 to 30, almost 40, up yeah, to 40. That's a good percentage gain. But when you think that the 200 period moving average, um, it still looks a little bit like a magnet rather than a propellant. I'd just be a little careful. But yes, in your case, I'd get my foot in the door. <laughs> but hopefully the door doesn't slam on the way out. Um, okay, next thing I had a question was, I wrote it down. Yeah, I did that, did that, did that, did that. Tuesday, today's Tuesday, right? Oh, next thing that came in was... Uh, yeah, it, you, you always, so I, I'll just have to sum it up because I, I now can't find it. It's disappeared behind it, another window. Um, you always talk about the IAI, which is the broker dealer index, and you've mentioned a couple of stocks that you really like over the period of time. Um, could you just mention those stocks? Could, could you mention them? And is there anyone as a favorite? So the IAI is the iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. So let me just go through. Uh, Schwab, I had this technique uh, that I use called the Chapman Wave Volume Climax Reversal. And that was on the 13th of March at 45 round, especially with a round number low. But it failed in the sense that this particular technique works really well when you immediately go above the gap down high, because it has massive volume, and then in 28 sessions, you close well above it. And that says you can go to 56 sessions without ever touching the 45 round number low. Well, it turns out 45.65 was, was, uh, was the low in May, months later, in a dreaded H going to a lowercase M pattern, each time successfully holding the 45 level. And now it's basically, except for one day, it's walked the nine period moving average, and it's at 57.95. That's that's 12 points off the low. We had it, but I just said, I, I, I don't like the action because I think it's going to be a retest of the low, and it did that. But then I, I, th I think it's actually holding much, much better now. So Schwab, uh, if anyone is interested... I, to tell you to get in now after such a uh, this particular point, the new recovery high that it's making today is kind of important and the weekly chart's improving. So if anybody is interested, nibble on Schwab. I wouldn't get too carried away, but you can just start a position. The other one I was talking about was Hood, and I, I really missed an, a great opportunity, Robin Hood. We'll talk about it when I return. Dow's up 84, SMB's up 7. But, The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So Robin Hood traded 85, round number high the second month it came out, came out in the 30s and screamed up to 85, round number high. Then it had a little bit of a pullback, and that pullback took it to $8.21. I'd say, what is that, a 92%, 91% decline? On the 4th of May, it made that arch formation that, that takes you, it's like straight up, straight down, like a steeple, like the Eiffel Tower, and it comes straight down, but it held the left side low. And then the nine period finally crossed positive and it, it ran up to the 200 period moving average, reversed at peak F sharply. Uh, it came down, that F was an alternate count F slash B. And then what it did went to G slash C above the 200 period moving average, then it went to the D and now it's in leg E. And I had drawn, I'd done everything for subscribers. I said, look, this is it, I even showed it. With the left side, right side, price, time match, that's the bar symmetry, the number of bars on the left and the number of bars on the right, and I drew this in. And we're, oh, look at that. It's it's exactly to the day. I said 11.52 on the 2nd of February to the, I chose the midpoint of a particular candle back in April, and I drew in this red on the left side, green on the right side, and the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line, and it said buy, this is the bar. Let me highlight it. So you can, yeah, right there. By the 11th of July, it should test 11.52. And the, the resistance based on the Chapman Wave inside wedge target is dashed green line. Repellent line was, in fact, for today, 11.44. Well, it's hit 11.86. It's trading at the high of the day right now in leg E. Amazing. Everything there. And yet I... It's embarrassing. And the weekly chart did the same thing. It's a little early getting to leg C. Remember, this is your starting point. So every peak in the Chapman Wave gets counted. That's the whole principle of this particular technique right there. So that's an A. Well, it pulls back, and it makes another A, and then another A. Now it starts a B and a C. As soon as it takes over, even the left side high, if that's an A, it's the count that it's in right now that is important. That makes it a leg C. This is a Chapman Wave overlapping wave this is uh, sorry a cup and ladle pattern so i always put it down chap wave cup and ladle to leg d and then it makes the left side high that we took out that's the high of 11.52 back in the on the 2nd of of february the support level and we should go to a D and then come back. And how we then after that test, this is going to be really important. But if you're looking at the monthly chart at $11.86, this is still a bargain if, in fact, I'm, I'm correct in saying that I believe the public are actually putting in money into the stock market. And therefore, this should be a beneficiary. So, oh, and then I usually make this gray, and we look at it much later on to say, was I correct, was I incorrect, or whatever it is. And the other one is IBKR. 
I always remember the symbol, then I forget what it's called. It's called Interactive Brokers. This is a brand new look. Gary went to peak. I haven't updated this. There's the chap with uh, falling axe formation. And now let's just put this in here. Pulls back. And it goes to a new starting point at the 200 period moving average. That becomes an A right there. But you've got to count each peak from the bottom. So this is an A. That's an A as well. You've got an overlapping B. And now it's in C and it should go to a higher high. Uh, had an, uh, today's high is 86 round number, but the, uh, the real high is going to be the one from three days ago of 87.03. So it should try to tackle that. And this is the pattern we were looking at. Chapman Wave falling axe formation. I've only got the one line in. I just took the other one out. And we broke above it. That all becomes support right there. In fact, I usually take it away. I don't like messy charts. So that'll come out at some point. So this is a very good action right now. Everything technically is good. So that's the reason why I've been saying I don't see a crash or anything at this particular point. But I do see a daily consolidation. That's kind of what we've been having. All right. Next question came in. D-Dog. Yeah. I, in fact, just this morning when I was doing my, my work for my subscribers, I looked at D-Dog and I thought, oh, this is really good action. Um, and I, I did the analysis for this uh, for Coda recently. And I said, if I'm correct, it should be a cut formation. 10380 was the high back in early June. It dropped down to 91. And then if I'm correct, this jab wave inside wedge target resistance line should get us to uh, 103.80 by the 12th of July, and the Chapman Wave inside wedge target line has resistance at um, 103.18. Well, that's not going to work because today it's up 344, up 3.3% at 104.88 already. So it's in leg D in the weekly chart, and the weekly chart also had, uh, it's actually a week late in the inside, uh, the in the symmetry, the bar symmetry on the left side to the right side. But look at that. This is the target we had. Oh, I've had so many of these drawn very nicely, not actually traded, but done either for subscribers or for myself. Um, for, for instance, I had one today. I don't know how it's doing right now. Um, where did I put it? Uh, okay, there it is. Uh, so this is W... No, W, where did it go? I just saw it a second ago, WBX. WBX, WBX is in the um, wall box. NV develops, de uh, develops, distributes EV charging station energy management. Um, great. It was uh, just uh, two weeks ago, it was in the twos, and today it went to $5.10. Leg D, and the reason why I didn't put it in for subscribers is I want to see how it's going to deal with the 200 period moving average. In the daily chart, it hasn't been there since. I mean, just look at the way that how important this particular moving average is only when it's important. Did you need to care about it back in April uh, of this year? Was it this year? No, last year, 2022. Yes, look, it became support resistance support resistance finally that sine wave said goodbye i'm on my way down and when it broke on the 16th of may of 2022 at 11:48 uh low uh that was it it just kept going down making lower lows and lower highs finally it hit what did it hit three dollars or two dollars and eighty cents so i can't remember it hit three dollars and fourteen cents Went to peak A, B, C, D, E, F, pulls back, gets an, a, a G. That's like a right arm extension, not a rogue wave, but a right arm extension G. Under the 200 period moving average, can't get there. Can't. If it gets much closer, then it's going to go there. But no, it has to go all the way back down. And then it goes all the way to the slow that was made on the, twin, on the 2nd of uh, May of this year. At 245, 244, makes an arch formation and then starts its move up. And finally, it gets to the 200 period moving areas. Now, this whole area of 490, four, four, is that correct? The high today is 510. Yeah, so $5.03 cents is the 200 period moving average, even if it pulls back, unless it pulls back under 390. This is going to be a magnet and it should keep coming back there. All right, so with that said, oh, 
Uh, let me just check all the questions that have come in. Yeah, I'll give you some other questions as soon as we can. Uh, I'll be back. Basil Chapman now is up 127 as the bees up 11. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I've also back, so just uh, quickly a couple of questions. Mm, yes, I uh, just have time for this. So you see the um, one minute chart of the E mini has gone to the e F. It's walking the nine period exponential moving average. I've put a down arrow. This is. This is where it's a little tough because the nine is still over the fourteen. But I tend to put that in. I'll change it if it's if it goes above that. But it doesn't mean to say you need to do anything because if you're long, you're holding that based on that nine period moving average. And look at the V-shaped pattern that's trying to unfold in the in the uh, in the ten minute chart of the E-mini. And basically, we're in a trading band, just a very a fairly narrow trading band compared to the usual uh, uh, price movement. So let me just run this quickly. If later in the day. Uh, by 1.30 to 2 o'clock, the Dow, which is now up 129, is able to hold a plus 90 or more, then probably going to have a pretty decent up close. If it starts to pull back and it's only up 40 points after 1.30, then it starts to shrink. It just says holding pattern until Fed. Uh, I think there's a Fed announcement in two weeks' time, but whatever it is, there'll be some, some something that comes out tomorrow afternoon regarding the Fed. Uh, so that's what we're looking at. Now, the other question is, oh, let me just have a look at that. 
Thank you for that information, JB in the den. Uh, high reading, uh, did I get a high reading? Oh, hit the right button. Uh, yeah, no, not high enough for me. Uh, let's just see. No, not high enough to make a difference. I have a ch ch chin gauge reading, but it didn't give me anything. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. That if there is a, a, I think there's going to be a stalling formation going into tomorrow. And the way I'm looking at it, I keep my eye on the SMHs, the semiconductor index, because that semiconductor, oh, I didn't finish all the different instruments. Anyway, the SMHs, the semiconductor has given back some of the gain, but that nine is still holding above the 14. So all I can say is, if there's going to be a sudden turn down in this market, you're probably going to see all of the insync all of the indices by Friday looking very negative and the 9 period moving averages will be under the 14. Otherwise, it can go like this stalling and a high level consolidation for another day.